Editing long podcasts like this or webinars for social is time consuming. Simplified AI Clips uses AI to turn your lengthy videos into short, viral clips. Create shareable content from your recordings in a few minutes. Built for small businesses and marketers looking to save time and boost engagement, visit simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today. Welcome to Your Brand Amplified, the podcast where we interview marketers, publicists, and brands to learn their stories, what makes them tick, and tips and tricks that make a difference. To find out more, point your browser to www.princubator.com or look us up at Annika Jackson PR. Welcome to another edition of Your Brand Amplified. I am so excited to be here today. I'm your host, Annika Jackson, and I'm here with Alex Sanfilippo. Alex, how are you? Annika, I'm doing so good. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Absolutely. I was just telling you before we started um, how much your platform has helped me with my podcast, and I'd love for you to introduce yourself to our guests, talk about what you do. And I think it's really important because not everybody realizes that they should be doing what you're going to talk about. And so I'm just going to tease it out there and then let you, yeah, yeah. Let you talk. <laughs> well, first off, uh, your brand Amplified. I just want to let you all know, Annika just made my, my day right before we got started. Just said some really kind things about the, the work that I'm doing. And I'm in a new startup. It's called Podmatch is the name of the website, which is simply put, it's a service that connects podcast guests and hosts together for interviews. Think about like Tinder, but for podcast interviews, basically <laughs> is kind of what we've created here. And like anyone who started a business, it is your baby. So when someone calls it ugly, it's offensive. When someone says something really nice, you're like, oh, that just made my day. So Annika, thank you for, again, for making my day. Oh, this is what I've devoted my time to is just is podcasting and really serving the podcasting industry on both sides of the mic. Really important to me to help independent voices get elevated and get heard. And I just think it's so well aligned with, with your show and your audience here, your mm -hmm. brand Amplified. I mean, that, like, that's, that's totally like what I, what I believe in. So I'm just really honored to be here today. Wonderful. Well, I love talking to people, finding out who they are, what makes them tick, and getting advice for our listeners um, who are small business owners and brands that are really looking how to amplify their brands, right? So right. Podmatch, how did you decide to start that? Yeah. So first off, I mean, I've been a podcaster myself for a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, and which in, in podcasting, that's like a lifetime at this point. Yeah. You've been <laughs> podcasting over three months. You're like a legend at this point. So I've been around for a while. When I first got started, I had the same problem everyone else did. I, I, I had trouble finding guests and we all have some form of network, right? Mm -hmm. So I just, I used up that network. Let's put it that way. I even had one friend who was probably, I'd say like my most successful close friend. I had him on three separate times and he's like, dude, you got to find some other guests, you know, like, oh, no. but I, I really struggled. And anyway, so like I had that problem, but I was really thankful. My podcast did exceptionally well, uh, almost out the gate. So I was able to build some credibility really fast and, and get guests, but I never really forgot that. It was a couple of years later, I was actually speaking at a, a podcasting conference. There's about 2000 people there. And I'll never forget, I told my wife, I'm getting ready to speak right when I get off stage, I'm going to ask everybody what they struggle with in podcasting. Like, because mm. whether you're a good or bad speaker, people will line up to talk to you, which I'm, I'm thankful for, right? People will encourage you. And so right when I finished speaking, sure enough, there was a line of people. And I just kind of documented what people were saying. When I consistently heard when I asked the question, what are you struggling with in podcasting? I kept on hearing, well, Alex, I'm having a really hard time finding the ideal guest to be on my show. Mm -hmm. having a really hard time finding the, the right guest that can, can spend the time with me. I don't even know where to look. I heard that a hundred times. And um, I'm not the brightest guy around always. Someone might've just like instantly clicked and be like, I know what to do. I went home and Nico with still no idea. I was like, I don't know what to do like mm -hmm. with that. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I ended up writing it out on a whiteboard and just the idea just clicked. I'm like, what if we had something that was kind of like a dating app, but it worked to connect guests and hosts together based on what they like to talk about. And at that point, I actually pitched to a, a co-founder of mine. He's a friend who I worked with years before. And he loved the idea. And he had just gotten freed up to, to do development work. Nice. So we signed some legal paperwork. We each put $2,500 into account, kind of bootstrapped the thing from there. And that was kind of the start of it. So that was, that was March, 5th, or March 10th, 2020. And on June 15th, 2020, we launched into an early beta. And we invited those 100 people that said that's what they're struggling with to, to come and check it out. And we just kind of grew it from there. And you have spent a lot of time also finding new people to come onto the platform and really developing it so strategically. I'm going to be honest, there are so many platforms that now try to match people. Um, and I've tried a few. And honestly, yours is the one that I've stuck with because you have made the process so seamless. 
Oh, thank you. It, it, it really is like a dating app or like, a, you know, a really great matching algorithm of finding the perfect guests and having them pitch you on why there are going to be great guests. Um, and for me as a host, that really helps me expand outside of my network because obviously I look at, I'm in PR marketing, right? So I look at my clients, right. I look at my close network, but like you said, you can only do that so much. <laughs> and then you really need to expand your circle. So talk about your podcast and how did you get into podcasting in the first place? Yeah, sure. And, and thanks for all those kind words, by the way. Again, totally making my day here. So uh, thank you. Um, uh, by the way, huge fan of your show. I've been listening for a little bit. This is a side note. Um, oh, but I listened to a, uh, an episode, I believe it was something that came out November 11th, 2021 with Pete Moore. Mm -hmm. uh, it was talking about simplifying entrepreneurship, which oh, yeah. much of this journey for me has been simplifying entrepreneurship. Not he's much smarter than I am. I'll say I learned a lot. He's from amazing. Interview, so yeah. I encourage everyone to go back and listen to that if you haven't heard it. But for me, starting my podcast was along that journey of like, entrepreneurship seems scary. Like I want to somehow simplify what entrepreneurship is. What does mm -hmm. it mean? And so for me, I was in a corporate job for 15, I, at that point, it was actually 12 years. I've been in mm -hmm. a corporate job and I was a senior director at the company on the executive team and, and really enjoyed it. But I knew that I wanted to get out and start something on my own. And I was really enjoying podcasts at that point. And entrepreneurship seemed weird, scary <laughs> to like a big corporate guy, right? Like, I'm like, what do you mean no health benefits and 401k options? You know, right. like, there's no match. Like, what is this? And um, so what I, what I did is I just decided, you know, what, I'm going to start a podcast where I talk to people about entrepreneurship and just see what I can learn. Yeah. I was curious myself. So I just started interviewing people about making that switch, being an entrepreneur and hearing their stories and journey along the way. I, I, I started it maybe a little bit selfish, but very quickly turned it to be for the people that were listening. And that's mm. when my show really grew, like grew a lot nice. really fast, which again, so thankful for, but it taught me what I needed to know now. I mean, I'm a full-time entrepreneur as of, uh, it would have been December 7th, 2020 is actually was my last day in corporate. And that wow. was after 15 years. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I think that's one of the big struggles. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've also had corporate jobs and that push pull of, you know, having, the security versus going out on your own. And I think entrepreneurs are often driven to keep on trying different things, right? Um, so what are some of the things that you've learned as an entrepreneur or le learned from interviewing people on your show and then also learned through the process of actually becoming an entrepreneur that you would give, that you would tell our audience today? Yeah, I mean, the, the first thing I would say is to to really hone in and focus on what you want to, to do. Mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned, like many of us entrepreneurs, like we, we tend to come across as scatterbrained. Like <laughs> we've got all these ideas, right? And that's been me at times. I still like, uh, my team knows that like when Alex shows up with 30 ideas, like he's just venting his ideas, right? Like we're not right. going to do these things because that would really steal the focus. The first thing I learned that helped me the most, I'd say was learning this mm -hmm. ability to focus on what needs to be the main thing. Mm -hmm. And for me, I always look at the word focus and use as an acronym, which I, I believe cool. focus stands for follow one course until successful follow one course until successful. Nice. So okay. for me, I'm always thinking about, okay, have I followed this through until it succeeded? Or mm -hmm. have I followed through enough that I realize it's not going to be successful. It's time for me to, to pivot or make some sort of adjustment, right? For me, when I first got started, I was open to anything. I was like, oh, I want to get out of corporate. So I was willing to try and do anything. And that was a big mistake. And I mentioned when I was telling that story that at year 12, I knew I wanted out. And it was yeah. year 15 when I actually left. There's a three-year gap there. And for somebody who was like a senior executive, right, in the aerospace industry, you'd think That's this huge. guy would know what he was doing, but I clearly didn't. And it's because I was like, oh, I'll start a, a WordPress uh, development agency. Mm. Oh, I'll start marketing. Oh, I'll start some coaching. I was all over the place. And I think, again, that's kind of a struggle of an entrepreneur, but being able to see the vision of where you know you want to go and having that very clearly in front of you and then staying focused on that one thing until it's successful I think that's something that really separates somebody from being a, for lack of a better term, like a entrepreneur, right? To an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, like truly being somebody that makes it and does it. Interesting. I'm going to have to remember that because I am one of those people who has a tendency to go, oh, wait, let's extend the brand this way. And let's do it this way. <laughs> but yeah, focusing on the fundamentals, I, I can tell you in my journey, um, my current company, I did not mean to start an agency. It just happened because it, the pandemic referrals, I could gain client referrals, you know, so it was uh, really organic and interesting, but there are so many things I've learned out of this experience, probably more than my other entrepreneur journeys. Um, and so I think that's one thing we're always learning. We're always trying to hone in and, and go, okay, next time I start something, maybe I'll do this. I'll tweak it this way. 
So yeah, you're, um, I'm thinking about your brand amplified once again, like the name of it. Clearly, yeah. if you started something this successful and it looks this good by almost mistake, you, you're the <laughs> right person to have a podcast with this title. You've done some really incredible work. So that, that's really cool to hear well, that. I appreciate that so much. And um, really, I mean, that's what I think I've always been about since I was a kid is loving to talk to people and brands and figure out what makes people tick and bringing people together collaboratively. Um, and that's what branding is all about, right? That's what storytelling is about when you're talking about brands. Um, and I'll give a quick little side note. Um, I've trademarked your brand Amplified and the trademark looks like it's finally going through. So that's really exciting and you're hearing it here first. <laughs> Very nice. Congrats. That's a huge move. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. So talk about the power of podcasting. Um, I mean, you've seen it yourself. You've been able to start your podcast, become an entrepreneur out of it, and then start PodMatch because you yeah. saw a need in the marketplace. Uh, and I, I know from personal experience, but I, I want to hear some of your experiences when you've matched people, what is it giving to them? How is it helping promote their brands? And how can somebody become a good podcast guest? Yeah, these, these are great questions, uh, Anika. I think, thank you for asking those. You know, first off, I think that uh, we're talking about entrepreneurs, right? I think that many of us, because we're not exactly sure the direction we want to go, a better way to start is to be a podcast guest. Mm. If, you can, if you can show up and add value, that's, that's great. Like you don't need your own show initially to do that. Now, I'm not saying don't start a show. I, I think it's great. It's a little bit of a labor of love, but like you know yeah. that being on your <laughs> side of the mic right now versus where I'm at is much different. We're done recording. I go wash my hands and yeah. I go do whatever I want to do. And you've got editing, you've got a whole like production that goes into it before everyone hears it. And for that, I'm so thankful. But at the end of the day, if someone's saying, oh, I think I want to do this, don't just go start a podcast, and then cancel it six weeks later. There's too many right. people to do that. What you should do is jump on as a guest, show up to add value and figure out really what you are passionate about, hone mm. that passion. So I think for a lot of people, start as a guest, I think would be a better idea because it helps you find your voice. And again, you're adding value to people. And at some point you'd be like, okay, I know what I want to do now for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and lock in and decide I'm going to commit and start my own show. But being on the, the side of guesting, when it comes to amplifying your, your brand, it, it's a great way to, to really start doing that. Because mm -hmm. people are listening to podcasts more than they're like scrolling through social media. Now, not, not more times, but if you do like a little ad or you have a post about your business, it's going to get scrolled past pretty quick. And it's not because yeah. it's your business. It's just because that's the nature of the beast that is social media. People are just scrolling. Like they, they might even like it, but they're probably not going to think too much about it. But if you're a guest on a podcast, and let's just imagine it's a 20 minute episode, somebody is giving you 20 minutes of their time to listen. Mm -hmm. They are listening to you for 20 minutes. And what I compare that to is not social media where you might be like, ooh, 5,000 people saw my post. Right. And you go on a podcast, only 100 people heard it or 50 people heard it. At the end of the day, that again, social media is someone scrolling past it. But to me, that 50 people that might have listened to you on a podcast, that's the same as a butt sitting in a seat. That's the same thing as you staying on stage and watching people listen to you. Mm. You're getting their undivided attention for a certain amount of time. And I just think that that is such a powerful thing. So I don't say that to discredit social media it has its place, but in mm -hmm. my mind, podcasting and being a guest on podcast is the most powerful way to develop no like, and trust with people that could potentially be your most ideal client. So think about that. Like they're listening to you. They can determine whether they like you, whether they, they feel like they know you a little bit, right. or if they want to trust you. <laughs> like those are things that, that guesting can do for you. So for me, that is my recommendation of where people should get started. And, and, and Anika, you can tell me where you want to go with that. If you want me to dive into some strategy there, or if you just want to do an overview, that is up to you. Yeah, I love strategy. And I even like, I'm excited to dig into this. I think it's a really important and valuable topic, especially going into a new year. You know, um, a lot of people are going to be looking. And I know on, on the other side, when I'm not hosting or being a guest, I have a PR marketing agency. And I often you know, try to get my clients to go on podcasts first, because exactly what you're saying, I know that they'll get the ears of a lot of people who really want to hear that content specifically. And it's a great way also to get them honestly comfortable. Um, if you don't have a big media training budget, continuing to do podcast interviews, you get better with your message every time. And you can really hone in on what makes you unique and what that perception should be of you and your brand and what you're offering to the marketplace. And so exactly everything that you're saying is so spot on in my experience too. And what I tell my clients who I do PR for or marketing for to do and why they should be coming on podcasts. Um, so I'd love to hear you dive in more and give some strategies. Yeah, definitely. The first thing I'm going to say here, disclaimer, 
is I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to dive into the gear. Um, there are a lot oh, of yeah. great episodes on the gear. Uh, on like what you need to get started. Uh, I, I can give you some resources that you can throw in the show notes if you'd like to do that. Um, they might not be related to me, but just like, hey, here's how you can get started for maybe a, a couple hundred, like a hundred dollars yeah. versus like, you don't need to spend five grand on a mic. Like you don't need like all this crazy lighting. Like it's pretty affordable to get started with podcasting. So for somebody who's listening, it has no clue. Don't feel like we're, we're telling you today to go out and spend $3,000 on like this crazy <laughs> setup. Like you don't need to do all that. So again, if, if you're interested, I can send you something. You can throw that in yeah, the show sure. notes if you want, just so people can kind of, figure out what they need exactly. Cause it's really not much really. If you've got a good internet connection, that is a requirement. Yeah, I'd say definitely. you don't want to be lagging, right? <laughs> a quiet environment. Um, we do live in a world where people are now okay. Hearing a kid in the background or a dog barking, <laughs> but you don't want like a kid right next to you being like mommy, daddy, like oh, hold on a minute. Right. Like you don't want to be getting into all that while you're on a podcast. So having that good environment is really important past that. It's a matter of identifying the shows that are the best fit for you. Mm. And because not all shows are created equal. I believe right. that all shows are good in their own area. Like people that are out there serving the world through this form of content that's podcasting. Brilliant. I love it. But they're not all created equal for you. Here's the thing. If you want to grow, like I'm just going to say like a social media marketing company, right? Like you're going to be doing uh, social media ads, which is something I know very little about. Let's say that's going to be your company that you're starting. Mm -hmm. But you also like went to school at Clemson. You shouldn't jump on Clemson podcast to talk about your experience there necessarily. You should find the ones that are directed toward people that are trying to grow on social yes. media and do advertising. So it can't just be everything you're like, oh, I know about that. I know about that. I know about that. Now, I do know some people, they jump on all those podcasts. They devote a lot of time. For mm. me, I go on less and less podcasts on an ongoing basis so that I can just get on the ones where my ideal audience is that I can actually impact and add value to based on what I'm doing. And so for everybody, you gotta got to sit down and evaluate. And I recommend writing it down. What is my purpose for being on a podcast? What mm -hmm. value do I add? And then specifically go after the ones of the right fit. Now, I will say this as well. The right fit isn't the Joe Rogans of the world. It's not right. the Tim Ferriss <laughs> of the world. Like you can go after those. You might spend years trying to get on one of them. But the truth is, if a podcast has 20 listeners, which doesn't sound like a lot, but if they're 20 of your most ideal listeners, yeah. that podcast is great for you to be on. Because remember, if I told you, hey, I've got a room of people right here, they are 20 of your most ideal listeners, they're waiting for you to jump on stage and talk. Everyone is going to jump at that opportunity, right? More so than, hey, let's try this or let's try this marketing thing. You're going to say, oh, there's people waiting for me. Sure, I'll go over to that. So the first thing is having that, all this I'm kind of sharing is, is mindset related, but you've got to have that proper mindset of which show is right for you. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. And that is honestly where Podmatch comes in, just to give you another plug. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you cut down on a lot of that legwork that people have to do when they're looking at finding the perfect podcast to be a guest on or other podcasts that are in their area if they're thinking about starting one. Um, that research element of, you know, do I want to start one if there are 5 million others that are talking about the same thing? Um, and I would say Probably the answer is still yes. If you really are committed to it, like you said, you can't just do something for a few weeks and decide to cut it off. Um, you have to continue with a process. It's like any marketing or PR tool. You have to continue. And that continuity helps continue to build your brand and helps continue to show your value in the market. That It shows that you're not going to be a fly-by-night person who just decides to dabble and then move on to something else. Yeah. And for, for me, it's also the connections that you make. Like you and I now, I believe like forever connected, like this is a good experience you have with somebody, like you add value to the world after that, you're really connected with people that, that come on your show. And for my show, a lot of the best connections I've had that have helped me grow Podmatch, helped me grow my companies have been people that have previously been guests on my show. Mm -hmm. Cause we had that, that same thing. We had a good connection. We really enjoyed working with each other. And now there's some of the people that have helped me grow more than anybody else. And that's something I'm really thankful for. Now, does the show drive as much revenue as, as Podmatch itself? Not even close. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, it, like if you look at it, most people would be like, from a business standpoint, stop your podcast is what most pe business people would say because they'd be just looking at the numbers. But the numbers are driven from the connections I'm making through the podcast. So I, I'm with you. Like people really, it, there's a time and place for it. But starting a podcast, I think really is a great thing. But again, I do believe that guesting is the right place to start. Nice. I love that. Um, well, what continues to inspire and motivate you? Yeah. So for me, me personally, it's just like, I've kind of been saying here, like I, I have a passion and a drive to help people get their voices heard yeah. and podcasting is the best way I'm finding that in the world right now, nice. whether they are talking about a product or service, or they're just sharing their story. Like we have some people 
that I've been able to listen to their podcast and they came through Podmatch, they went through some really traumatizing events. Like they mm-hmm. went through some like really dark stuff and now they're just coming on no product or service. They are literally just sharing their story. Yeah. And just being able to hear something like that authentically get shared and help somebody else who might be going through something similar is a beautiful thing. So at, at the end of the day, I guess my why, which I believe all of us are driven by that why, right? I, I just believe my why is to continue to help elevate these voices and to serve the people that are that are trusting us to serve them with this service. And it's something that I thoroughly enjoy. I wake up and re reconnect with that why every single day, but it's something that I'm really knowing that we're making a big impact with. Awesome. And you have your podcast, you have pod match. What's next? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> you know, I think, I think the next thing for me is really just to do more on the education side. So yeah. to, to help people that are in podcasting more and more, uh, like what we talked about today, I think that giving people the idea of like which type of shows to look for and maybe starting with guesting before starting their own show, Ooh. like those type of things, Very just sharing like little tips like this, I think could really help save somebody a lot of pain along the way mm-hmm. um, because there's a lot involved in it. So I think what's next for me is to really hone in on the education side of things and to find more ways, just both sides of the mic. How can I help people be more effective in what they're sharing, getting their message heard? Awesome. Wonderful. I love it. Um, I love bite sized content. You know, I listen to podcasts probably more than I scroll on social media to your point again. <laughs> Good. That's great. <laughs> you might be, you're one of the few. <laughs> oh, no, it's, you know, it gets overwhelming. Um, and I also notice on social media, you, you know, even promoting your podcasts on social media, using headline or using other tools to help give like little snippets of your content and drive people back. It's such an effective way nowadays, especially with the overwhelm that we're all getting from having been home primarily, maybe not in Florida. Um, I think it's a little more open than California. A little bit, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but um, people are always looking for new ways to engage with content and looking for things that are new and exciting. And we want to hear stuff. We want to hear that content, right? Um, yeah. And that's something you can do when you're in the car. You can just put on your favorite podcast when you're driving to work or driving to the store or whatever and listen to something where you're not going to be scrolling through your phone looking at social media posts. Yeah, which isn't really the wise decision while you're driving. So um, (laughs) this this is much better than that. But you're right, the discoverability of podcasts, uh, to to your point, like through social media and even just through the the different um, directories that people Mm -hmm. use to actually find podcasts, like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, all these places, their their searches are getting really smart like search engines. Mm -hmm. So again, if you, going back to the whole point, like if you find the right podcast to be on and you get a great topic that you cover, somebody might find that through just searching in the actual player. Or here's the thing, if you find a podcast that you're on and the host does a great job making these, these assets as you're talking about, how you'll have like audiograms and like good, good graphics around it, like that as a guest, that's a win. I can share that with my whole audience and they're like, oh, I'm interested in that topic. And Alex just talked about it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go check that out. Uh, there's some great ways just to be able to get yourself out there a little bit more. Well, and speaking to your point about what's next for you and what you'd like to do, if somebody wants to connect with you, they want to hear your podcast, they want to check out Podmatch. Or they want to learn more about the starting the podcast journey, right? Um, as a guest or as a podcaster, what are the best ways to get a hold of you? Yeah, uh, thank thank you for the opportunity to share this. As a matter of fact, this would be a little bonus tip if that's okay with you. Oh, nice! Here. I love um, it. <laughs> a singular call to action is one of the most important things I've learned when it comes to podcasting. If I tell you all to go one of ten places, mm-hmm. chances are most people will get lost. You need to say one thing. So if you're saying, okay, I'm going to be on podcast, don't say go here, here, or here, Mm. give them one place. So to that, that little bonus there, for me, I've now moved everything. Like I used to have four or five places. Now I just have one. If you go to podpros.com, podpros.com, everything is there. You can find Podmatch. You can find all the other services we have. The education side of things is there. My podcast is there. So that is my new hub of everything that you can find. So podpros.com. And again, I recommend if you're thinking about getting into podcasting, either side of the mic, have a very singular call to action of where you're sending people. Wonderful. I love it so much. Alex, thank you for being on our podcast today. Um, Do you have anything else that you want to share with the audience? Yeah, I'll I'll share one last point. And again, thank you so much for having me. The the last thing that I, that I want to share here is just to remember that each and every one of us have greatness and creativity within ourselves. We all have greatness and creativity within ourselves. And I say that because so many of us, we don't feel that we're ready to get out and share our voice Mm -hmm. Some people listening to us today, your brain amplified, you're, you're amplifying, but not to its full potential yet. Maybe the idea of being a guest on a podcast or starting your own sounds scary to you. But at the end of the day, I believe that you do have that greatness and creativity within yourself. And it's a shame if you're not sharing it with the world because it could help serve and change somebody's life. And I firmly believe that. 
there's somebody who needs what you have that only you can provide. And if you're not sharing that, I think that that's a, that's a problem. It might be actually hurting somebody. So get out there and remember who you are. You're a great person. You're, you're a created being made to create yourself. And I believe that this is just a powerful medium to do this. So I, I just encourage everybody get out there and start creating and sharing that in a creative way as well. Can I just have you on like every call I have with a client who's not ready to talk to, uh, to be the, the voice of their message or the product that they created? <laughs> and Nico, like uh, I said, we're, we're connected now. So whatever you yeah, need totally. from me, I am here to show up. And I love, as a listener of your podcast, I love what you're doing. Anything I can do to add oh. value, I'm here for. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh my gosh, Alex. Thank you so much for this inspiring conversation. I always learn things when I speak to guests too. Um, I think it's a great place to be as an entrepreneur, always learning, right? Always learning, always uh, figuring out new and better ways to do things. And you have definitely sparked me for the new year and got me really excited about doing this and continuing to do this um, to continue the platform of your brand Amplified, continue going on Podmatch. And I've been really lazy, I will say. I've been letting people come to me and now I'm going to have to go poke around a little bit more and uh, find some other perfect guests and podcasts to be part of. That's it. Being proactive. I'll tell you what, that is, that is a key to success as well, right? Being proactive. But uh, I, I love that. I helped inspire that. And I, I, I just hope that the Your Brand Amplified listeners today got the same thing out of this. Definitely. I'm, I'm sure they did. And I really appreciate you being here. And audience, I thank you for being here for another week of Your Brand Amplified. And we'll be back again next week. Want more tips and tricks? Check us out online at www.annikapr.com, on social media at Annika Jackson PR, or join our three month PR Incubator Bootcamp for small businesses via www.princubator.com. Editing long podcasts like this or webinars for social is time consuming. Simplified AI Clips uses AI to turn your lengthy videos into short, viral clips. Create shareable content from your recordings in a few minutes. Built for small businesses and marketers looking to save time and boost engagement, visit simplified.com and use Annika30 to save 30% today.